My name is Fernando Barrientos and I will moderate this webinar. I work for a Sherman organization called Stambai Europa Centrum, which provides consultancy services in the field of innovation management. Our role within the project Romorban is to manage the project's IP assets and to support the market deployment of selected solutions developed throughout the project's duration. Shall you be interested in the project and or in the technological and non-technological solutions demonstrated in the cities of Valladolid, Nottingham and Tepebashi, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We will be glad to advise you on how to proceed. So today's session brings together two experts from different Turkish companies and one representative of Tepebashi municipality to share the experience of the city of Tepebashi in its journey to become a smarter and thus a greener city. All three speakers work together in the framework of Remorban, a project which is financed by the European Commission under the umbrella of its Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Funding Program. One of the goals of the project is to demonstrate that the transformation of a city such as Tepebashi into a smart city can be accelerated following a tailor-made plan of interventions in the areas of district retrofitting, urban mobility and ICT. Among the set of interventions made under the field of ICT technologies, Remorban has developed four ICT platforms which work at local and project level. Such platforms make possible the monitoring of current implementation plans as well as future improvements and interventions. Explaining what is the role of the ICT platform City on Cloud within the project, what for is Tepebashi demanding the use of such a solution, as well as how does City on Cloud meet Tepebashi's need, will be the job of our speakers today. As you might notice, your microphones have been mute. This is to prevent any interruptions while the speakers carry out their presentations. As the topics of today's agenda are presented, you may have comments or questions for our speakers. If that is your case, please don't hesitate to write them down in the everyone's chat box. I will collect them during the course of the presentations and ask them aloud to our speakers in the dedicated questions and answers session. Now, let me introduce you the speakers of this webinar. Janer Demir is founding member of the Turkish consultancy firm Demir Energy. He will connect the dots to help us understand the role of the ICT platform City on Cloud within the broader context of the project Remorban and its urban regeneration model. Next, Murat Aksu representative of the municipality of Tepebashi, will present the point of view of a city towards the need of a well-built ICT infrastructure. The last presentation will be made by Murat Karabatur, head of mobile solutions at Olksan Technology, who will illustrate the audience on how the ICT platform City on Cloud works and how it makes it easier for cities to manage big amounts and different streams of information. Finally, we will close this webinar with a session of questions and answers. So, let's get started. Janer, the floor is yours. Thank you, Fernando. Hello, everyone. As you all know, world population is increasing rapidly and it is ex expected to reach around 10 billion by 2050. This is of course is related with the life expectancy which has increased from 30 years in 18th, 19th century from pre-modern poor world. Since 19, the global average life expectancy has more than doubled and is now approaching 70 years. With the increasing population, demand for the natural resources such as food, water, energy are also increasing. On the other hand, natural resources are decreasing. 
By 2050, demand for all resources will increase more than 50%. Another fact that urban population is also increasing. In 2008, urban population exceeded rural. Today, more than 50% of the people living in the urban areas. And it will reach up to two-thirds of the population by 2050. When we look at the EU and US, this figure is much higher. In Turkey, almost 90% of the population lives in the cities. As you all know, cities are using 2% of the land, but consume 70% of energy, emit 75% of greenhouse gases, and generate almost all of the waste. Increasing population expectancy of higher living standards, especially in the developing countries, created many challenges in the cities. You can see some of the challenges that cities are facing today. Energy. One of the main issues in the cities, especially, prices are increasing and dependency on foreign fossil fuel is creating energy security and environmental problems. Therefore, local and renewable energy production is becoming more and more important for today and the future of the cities. Buildings. People are spending 90% of their time in buildings for living, working, for leisure, etc. It is very important to create healthy indoor environments, to maintain comfort levels, such as desired room temperature, lighting levels, amount of fresh air, energy is required. Today, buildings are responsible for 40% of the greenhouse gas emissions. Traffic, parking problems, accessibility of city infrastructures, such as fresh water, waste, communication, etc., are also some of other important challenges. Of course, all the private and public activities have an, a negative impact on the environment. Citizens are expecting fast, affordable, reliable, and environmental friendly services from city administrators. I would like to open a bracket to talk about ICT, information and communication technologies, impact of the greenhouse gas emissions and its enabling effects. The figures on the screen was from a study done by Global E-Sustainability Initiative. And you can see now ICT solutions and services are impacting world's total greenhouse gas emissions in 2020 and 2002 and 2020 business as usual scenarios. And the abatement strategy and ICT enabled on the GHG emissions. As you can see on the abatement side, ICT enabled effect is five times higher than its direct in, in uh, direct footprint. If, if you look at the, the, the sectors and breakdown of this effect, industry, transport, buildings, and energy, smart motors, process automation in industry, smart logistics, private transport optimization, traffic flows management systems in trust transport, smart buildings, smart grids, efficient and generation of power in buildings and energy sector. Also, almost in sectors, dematerialization has significant impact on the greenhouse gas emissions. When we come back to, to those smart cities and communities, as Fernando mentioned, uh, EC Commission uh, started a program uh, called Smart Cities and Com Communities and, and uh, funded uh, smart city projects starting from 2014. And you see uh, 13 projects, two is missing from 2018, but with them 13 projects are trying to address these challenges, mainly focusing on the district energy, sustainable mobility, and integrated infrastructure. Project called Remo Urban, which uh, we are working on, you see the consortium on the screen. Uh, Remorban is the first of its kind project, submitted in 2014 and funded by 
our European Commission and started in the beginning of 2015. 22 partners involved from seven different nationalities, five municipalities, three research institutions, five large industri industries and nine SMEs. Three lighthouse cities, leading cities, developing smart city strategies and implementing demonstration actions. Two cities, Saran and Miskolc, are the follower cities which are learning and replicating lighthouse cities uh, demonstration activities. Remurban, uh, in Remurban project, uh, three main pillars uh, uh, is the most important uh, we should mention. First one is the sustainable urban mobility. Uh, each lighthouse cities are de developing a strategy and uh, preparing an implementation uh, plan uh, for electromobility, uh, e-bike, e-buses, and associated charging infrastructures. And also, um, ne next uh, player is the sustainable district and build environments. Also, three uh, lighthouse cities, uh, they are developing energy efficiency, renewable energy uh, actions uh, in the build, built environment and, and, and uh, developing a strategy about it. Also, the third pillar is the, the integrated infrastructure and processes. Uh, here is the ICT solutions uh, are, are taking uh, the main role uh, and also cross-cutting activities which are non-technical actions, uh, technical barriers, citizen engagement strategies and financial schemes are also uh, cross-cutting activities in the Grim Urban uh, project. Uh, this is the end of my uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for your explanations, Shaner. Um, let's now move the focus from the project level towards the local level and the concrete case of Tepebashi, a city in Turkey which is reinforcing its ICT infrastructure. Murat Aksu, representative of Tepebashi's municipality, will share his point of view about this subject. Hello, everyone. A sustainable future depends on making cities smarter and more sustainable. Tepebashi Future City Vision is creating a healthy, sustainable, and livable environment for all citizens and becoming a leading smart city in Turkey. Tepebashi will be developing local sustainability strategy by 2020. This makes us the first municipalities to break down the 17 sustainable development goals of the 2030 agenda. At the local level, by designing an integrated local development strategy with specific targets. Tepebashi is the first municipality in Turkey that delivered an interim report on sustainable energy action plan and reached the level of excellence in three areas that were the transportation, the generation of electricity, and energy efficient activities. In addition, Tepebashi is the first municipality with the highest budget with only one project among all public institutions in Turkey within the scope of the Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program. Horizon 2020 is with a simple structure that reduced red tape and time so participants can focus on what is really important. This approach makes sure new projects get off the ground quickly and achieve results faster. For local authorities, Sustainable Energy Action Plan creates a major opportunity for funding in Horizon 2020. The importance of local authorities in addressing the complexities of sustainable development has been increasingly recognized by both the European Union and its partner countries. Sustainable development of urban areas is a challenge of key importance. It requires innovative, efficient, and user-friendly technologies and services, in particular in the areas of energy, transport, and information and communication technology. However, 
These solutions need integrated approaches as well as deployment. Remova made a significant revolution with its sustainable urban regeneration model by addressing one of the greatest challenges of this century to transform traditional cities into smart cities. With the contributions of the Remorgan project, Tepebushi was able to implement a variety of interventions to its energy as well as mobility infrastructure. For instance, retrofitting renewable, heating and cooling, distributed energy generation, electricity distribution, clean energy vehicles, and smart grid connectivity. The retrofit interventions in the district are thought to be highly relevant and exemplary for hundreds of thousands of residential buildings with similar characters, both in Eskişehir and also across Turkey. Remorban is a lighthouse project whose will tackle issues at the intersection of the energy, transport, and ICT sectors. Tepebushi demo site is the, in the middle of these development areas and presents a smart and sustainable alternative to urban development in Turkey. Tepebushi demo site, also known as Life Village, has been established with the aim of providing better services to healthy senior citizens, students, kids, mentally disabled citizens, visual impaired citizens, and Alzheimer patients. I will emphasize why ICT should be considered a basic infrastructure in the new urban agenda. ICT is a key enabler through their capacity to gather, process, analyze, and disseminate a considerable amount of data, provides valuable solutions in different sectors of modern cities. It aims at overall smart control of energy production and consumption for data analytics and energy saving interventions and monitors user side in every building unit for energy conscious behavior change. I also give examples of the roles that ICTs play in smart sustainable cities. Energy efficiency, advanced building management system, clean transport infrastructures, city information platform, and multimodal transport solution are essential monitoring tools in smart sustainable cities. While these interventions have Tepebushi becoming more energy efficient, an improvement of integrated ICT infrastructure and the implementation of a smart city platform were needed to make it fully smart. Lighthouse Project Cooperation Manifesto. There are presently 12 smart city projects involve 36 lighthouse cities and 42 follower cities, representing a collective total European Union investment of 500 million with the Horizon 2020 programming period. 12 smart city projects that formally signed the Lighthouse Project Cooperation Manifesto are working to collaborate around common open integrated and packaged solutions and demonstrate the process technologies and business models to transform their own ecosystem into smart and more sustainable places. It should also be noted that European Union funded the project tracked by the European Union Smart Cities Information System. Smart City Platform helps technology become smart. Many systems and platforms are allowed by the municipality. Collecting all of these on a single platform called Smart City Platform provides a significant benefit to municipality in terms of time and effort. The Smart City Platform that developed by Ölsan for Remorban is like a basket containing measurements built around cloud technology. The platform accommodates city-centric solutions to address the wide range of the city challenges, provides a foundation for urban infrastructure, applications, and services, plus several city-specific functions and collects information from smart meters as well as other devices and platforms. The city-owned cloud platform helps the municipality monitor its energy consumption 
and measure the savings achieved and allows the city users to access the information easily from anywhere and any computer and mobile device. I will also highlight how the use of the ICTs will help enable the implementation of smart city. A smart city isn't just about new technology though. It improves the lives of the people who live and work in the city by maximizing the potential of the new technology and integrated data. By adopting a smart approach, the city is achieving better outcomes with less resources, improving citizen satisfaction, and supporting local economic growth. Although impressive work has been done in Tepabashi and other lighthouse cities, even the most cutting-edge smart city is only at the beginning of the, its journey. Thank you very much. Thank you, Murat Aksu, for sharing your interesting point of view. We are now approaching to the end of this webinar, so I would like to remind you to write down the questions that you might have in the everyone's chat box. Now, the next and last presentation will be done by Murat Karabatur, who will discuss on the ICT platform developed by Olksan Technology and how it meets Tepebashi's demand. Murat, you are most welcome to start with your presentation. Uh, thank you, Fernando. Hello to everybody. I will start with a quote from the famous author and management consultant Peter uh, Drucker. He said that if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So uh, the main job and objective of the Tepebashi's smart city uh, information platform is to collect and measure data so that the municipality can improve on the energy use and consumption. The platform is monitoring a whole set of energy data from various devices, sensors, and smart city applications. The platform, called uh, City on Cloud, is implemented as a platform of platforms, meaning that it is connected and integrated with different applications implemented in Tepeweshe in order to make the municipality user's life easier to monitor and manage all of these applications from one place. It is designed in a modular fashion so that other applications can be added later on as well. City on Cloud, uh, we call it COC in short, collects data from the building energy management system, uh, Imon CMS, which is the energy monitoring system for electric meters, the solar panel system, uh, vehicle tracking system, e-bike management system, and last but not least, smart street lighting system. COC is hosted on the cloud, hence the name uh, of the platform. So using your username and password, you can securely access the platform from any computer or mobile device connected to the internet. On the main page, a dashboard will give the user an overview of the total energy consumption. There are a total of 17 buildings managed in Petrobashi demo site. And the uh, energy consumption per building can also be monitored within the dashboard. Uh, the operation map of the COC shows the location of each building and allows the user manage each building separately. For example, each thermostat within the buildings can be accessed from uh, this uh, page. For energy monitoring, uh, COC is connected to the building management system, as I mentioned. Uh, the BMS takes care of uh, thermal energy monitoring, thermal comfort, and uh, heating and ventilation AC controls. COC uh, collects raw data uh, from the BMS uh, via Modbus over TCP IP protocol. 
And this raw data is uh, processed uh, to calculate uh, some of the important energy indicators for the city. For electric energy consumption, uh, COC is integrated with uh, MONCMS, uh, the energy monitoring platform uh, for electric meters. The COC, uh, within the COC, the status of each electric meter can be seen, uh, whether it's online or offline, like the uh, two cases here with red status. Uh, in addition, the electric consumption of each electric meter can be uh, tracked separately as well. For the solar energy production, uh, COC is integrated uh, with the solar panel system. And uh, here you can monitor the solar energy produced by the solar panels implemented at Tepebashi demo site. The energy produced can be seen on a daily, monthly, or yearly basis. Uh, here, for example, you can see the daily production for the month of uh, June. Uh, when it comes to the mobility uh, with the COC, we are also monitoring the electric buses, hybrid cars, and electric bikes. Uh, COC is integrated with a fleet management system to monitor the e-buses and the cars. Uh, there are many parameters of the vehicles that can be monitored including the speed, odometer values, as well as the live location of the vehicle. Uh, in addition to the live location, past locations and the routes taken can be seen uh, as a heat map. For example, you can see it on the lower right image. For the e-buses, uh, we also collect uh, extra information, such as uh, battery charge level and consumption information, so that we can measure the savings obtained by uh, using e uh, electric buses uh, in, uh, uh, instead of traditional diesel uh, engine buses. Uh, this information is directly obtained from the e-bus itself, but uh, COC is also, uh, is also collecting data from the bus charging stations and uh, monitors the total electricity used by the uh, electric buses. Uh, there are also uh, three bike rental locations and uh, 30 e-bikes implemented uh, in Tebebashi with the Remorman project, as you can see here uh, in these images. Uh, the City on Cloud platform is integrated uh, with the e-bike system uh, to monitor all of these e-bikes and rental locations, each um, with 15 corresponding charging and docking stations. You can see uh, in the image here the rental locations and the bike path between these locations. Last, uh, there's a smart streetlight application implemented at Te Tepebashi demo site. This is done using the Earthsun's smart streetlight solution called Agassi. With Agassi, we are controlling 44 lamps at demo site. Uh, this uh, system supports three different modes, manual, schedule-based, and sensor-dependent mode. In the sensor dependent mode, uh, the system acts autonomous, and we, uh, when there is no movement is detected, it dims the light to 20% level, providing an additional 80% uh, percent of savings. When a person walks outside, this is detected by motion sensors, and the lamps in that area are brightened to 100% level, so that the person can walk safely in that area. Now I will uh, talk a little more in detail about why cities should be looking for and implement smart street lighting solutions. When cities look for upgrading their street lights, they first look for light emitting diode lights, uh, LED lights, because of their advantages. 
Uh, these are, for example, very quick startup time, uh, a high color temperature, uh, which improves driver uh, vision, uh, very long lifespan, uh, they can last up to 15 to 20 years. They're uh, much more energy efficient than uh, traditional uh, like fluorescent lights or uh, HPS lights. They're safer and more efficient in cold weather. Uh, they also, uh, they're highly shock resistant, for example, uh, on bridges with vibrations, uh, they're ideal. So overall, LED lights provide relatively much smaller carbon fo footprints. Uh, but uh, there are some, uh, there are also some important downsides to pay attention to. Uh, white looking light can suppress melatonin production. For example, LEDs can uh, LED suppress five times more than the uh, high pressure sodium lights do. Uh, they produce far more blue light, which can cause retinal uh, damage. Uh, in general, uh, up to 90% of, uh, there are many lead product uh, producers and up to 90% of them are not the highest quality. Uh, we recommend cities to go with the high tier, 10% um, of the lead uh, pro uh, producers. Uh, and this way they can reduce the complaints uh, such as light pollution, glare, light press, light trespass, etc. So upgrading to LED light can uh, provide around 40% savings, but uh, with a smart system, this can be increased to 80 to 90% through additional savings. Uh, first of all, uh, with smart system, uh, the citizen sat satisfaction will be improved by better security and safety. The savings include not just uh, less power consumption, but also more importantly, better lighting system maintenance. And um, the lighting infrastructure uh, can serve as a backbone for other IoT applications. For example, additional sensors can be used for monitoring the, the weather, the pollution, noise, or uh, tracking uh, traffic conditions. As a result, we believe that smart lighting solutions are one of the best ways for cities to start becoming uh, smart cities. This is obviously uh, only one of the many ways for of making cities smarter and greener. So that's all from me, Fernando. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Murat. Um, well, after this insight into the characteristics and functionalities of the ICT infrastructure, which is being implemented in Tepebashi, it is time for the questions and answers session. And I can see on the chat box that Anne Veva, she has a question, and I will just read it aloud. Um, the question is to smart Street light regarding smart street lightning. Do you plan to use the sensors at the lightnings also for other purposes supporting well-being or, for example, the safety safety reasons? This question is probably um, could, could probably be answered by um, Murad Karabatur and uh, Murad Aksu. So I just I, I just leave you the word to you. Uh, whoever wants to answer this. Uh, I will uh, actually answer from the technical uh, point of view. Uh, at the moment, um, the uh, smart street lighting implemented at Tepebushi uh, provides uh, this autonomous mode which uh, mostly uh, save, uh, saves energy, uh, but the infrastructure is there, so it can be uh, enhanced with additional sensors or technology uh, to collect uh, additional information, as I also mentioned towards the end of the uh, presentation. 
so um, uh, it's up to the municipality uh, to implement uh, these kind of additional uh, uh, technologies. Um, In addition to Murat, I like to yes, uh, please. In addition, I, I, yeah, I like to add a couple things. Uh, smart lighting uh, perfectly balances the citizens' need to feel safe by ensuring well lit public spaces, while cutting back on the district's overall energy cost, because the amount of light use constantly adapts to real time situation. Thank you. Yeah. F F Fernando, uh, this is Jenner speaking. Also, uh, I would like to add a couple of uh, things uh, on top of that. As a nature of the demo site area, um, uh, we have some sensors uh, separated from the uh, lighting systems. Uh, for example, we are monitoring uh, the air quality, uh, the outside temperature, humidity and so on uh, as part of our BMS systems. Or also, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the buildings belongs to the municipality has uh, its own uh, 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 security uh, system and, 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 and uh, security guards as well. So as a nature of the demo site area, uh, we don't need to integrate this uh, 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 purposes on the street lighting, but uh, definitely, uh, it can be done in different different locations and areas uh, in the in the city. Thank you. Thank you, Shannar. Well, um, so I have a question myself, um, which probably Murat Karabatur uh, will be able to answer, and. It's about the heat map function of City on Cloud. Um, I'm just curious about it. And well, if you can tell us more uh, about this functionality and also how can the information be used by a city, well, I would be just very grateful. Uh, sure, Fernando. Um... The heat map um, is uh, using historical data uh, of uh, the location of the vehicles. Um, uh, normally, the fleet tracking uh, uh, tracks the vehicle uh, quite uh, like every five seconds, ten seconds. So we have very detailed information uh, where they travel. So it's important uh, to know, for example, where uh, each car is going or uh, the bus is traveling. Uh, with the heat map, uh, it uh, uses this historical data, uh, could be the last day, last week, or maybe the last month. And we will show that, OK, uh, the, this bus traveled, let's say, to the north of the city, to the south of the city. And we can uh, also. Uh, pick and choose uh, multiple either cars or buses and uh, track and uh, see uh, where these vehicles are traveling. Uh, so this can be used by the city in many different ways. For example, to make sure that uh, if, let's say, they use the bus for school, uh, it's on the right path uh, going to the school back and forth and not to other places or could be a, any other purpose. So uh, this information is always there. Uh, so the municipality uh, can check uh, this data uh, and see uh, if everything is uh, uh, being used properly or not. Uh, so there are many others also uh, questions that they might have uh, to check uh, this uh, uh, heat map. Uh, heat map can help them uh, to answer. Thank you, thank you. Um, because um, I just find this feature of the um, 
of the city on cloud uh, amazing I was just curious um, and then maybe another question also for you probably um, is the ICT platform city on cloud ready to manage even bigger amounts of data or would such a challenge require some more R&D so research and development efforts uh, the amount of data um, can be expanded uh, quite easily uh, because um, uh, the main reason we are hosting in the cloud is it allows uh, using additional resources uh, much uh, easier. Uh, for example, we, we only use maybe uh, the exact or just a, a sufficient amount of database and resources for managing uh, all of these uh, applications that we went through uh, but uh, if the if there were not just 44 lamps but let's say uh, 400 lamps or if they there were not uh, 17 buildings but uh, 170 buildings uh, we could easily uh, collect data from uh, these additional um, uh, data points uh, uh, because the platform uh, is built in a modular way and uh, you can add ad additional um, uh, either devices or things and uh, when uh, we collect from one uh, data source uh, we can also collect from uh, hundreds of data sources, uh, similar data sources very easily. Uh, we just need to expand the capacity of the uh, infrastructure that we use in the cloud. So that's, that would be a, a very uh, easy and quick uh, job. Thank you, Murat. Um, well, so now Again, uh, coming out from my curiosity, uh, I would like to ask Murat Aksu, um, now that we have heard directly from Murat Karabatur uh, how flexible and expandable and modular this uh, city on cloud is, um, and taking into, into account that uh, you represent the municipality of Tepebashi in this webinar, um, I would like to ask you if Tepebashi is planning to expand its ICT infrastructure to other parts of the city. Yes, yes, Tepebashi is planning to expand. Uh, indeed, Tepebashi even went one step further and uh, established the ICT com uh, committee of the city which included almost all stakeholders of the city of Eskishaya. This committee works especially for the strengthening and expansion of the ICT infrastructure. ICT infrastructure does, however, needs to have a holistic plan for Tepebashi municipality. We should not uh, forget that the smart city technologies and ICT infrastructure are key to ensuring that cities are ready to grow and thrive in the context of the rapidly changing urbanization. Thank you for asking. Well, and thank you for answering our questions. Uh, thank you, Anveva, for uh, your question. It was very interesting. And now, uh, well, before closing this webinar, um, let me thank the speakers. Let me thank the organizers for their hard work and also the audience for your attention and participation. Also. Please remember to save the date for our next uh, Remorban webinar, which will take place on June the 19th at 14 o'clock. That's uh, Central European time. And well, just stay tuned to our communication channels because more webinars will be announced soon. 
So thank you very much for your participation and I wish you a very nice weekend. Thanks. Thank you.